Where and how did life develop? It's a great mystery. There are several possibilities. The molecules of life, such as amino acids, which are essential elements of protein, may have been brought to Earth by comets or meteorites. Primitive forms of life might also have developed at extreme temperatures in a world without oxygen, in the hell of the new planet nearly four billion years ago. One fine day, or maybe it was night, the first cell to be defined as such appeared, an independent organism, delimited by a membrane and capable of reproducing itself. This cell, the last universal common ancestor, has been christened LUCA by the scientists. A hypothetical cell model, traces of which we'll never find. And so in order to comprehend the evolution and diversity of living beings, we turn to the microscopic organisms of today. But how can any sense be made of this seething mass? By observing their form and aspect, but more than that, by comparing their DNA sequences, systematicians have distinguished three major cell families. The first is the eubacteria family. U meaning good, true, true bacteria. They're usually only a few thousandth of a millimeter in size, but some can measure up to a millimeter in diameter. They often take simple, elongated, round or spiral forms. Pigments sometimes make them green or red. They can live independently or organize themselves into filamentous colonies. They colonized the planet over three billion years ago. The eubacteria are delimited by a membrane made up of two layers of fat. Their cytoplasm is like a soup, containing a mass of proteins, enzymes, nanomachines, and one single chromosome. Sometimes they're allowed movement by the presence of one or more cilia. They reproduce by division. One bacterium gives rise to two identical daughter cells. Some exchange morsels of DNA, not only between themselves, but different species too. Indispensable to life on Earth, in all environments, their proliferation can be very rapid. Today, more than 10,000 species of eubacteria have been identified. The second major group are the archibacteria. Archi meaning original, original bacteria, because the person who discovered them thought he had found the first inhabitants of the planet. They have a special envelope, which is highly resistant and sometimes rigid. Their sophisticated biochemical mechanisms allow them to proliferate in extreme environments, whether they be strongly acidic or devoid of oxygen, at very high temperatures or at very great depths. Several hundred species have been described and new archaebacteria are regularly discovered. Did cells evolve from the most extreme to the most common environments? If this were the case, archaebacteria would be the oldest on Earth. Or has this evolution taken place the other way round? Archaebacteria would then become the most recent forms on our planet, being the only ones able to live in such extreme conditions. The third major cell type is the eukaryote. Karyote meaning nucleus, eukaryote, true nucleus. Unlike bacteria, they have a compartment reserved for their chromosomes, the nucleus. The smallest specimens are only a few thousandths of a millimeter big, but some nerve cells can measure several meters. 
more complex, they're also more fragile and don't venture into extreme environments. They need oxygen to survive and their membranes explode at too high a temperature. They can behave as independent unicellular individuals or in close association in multicellular organisms or metazoa, such as flowers, you or me, and shells. Like you bacteria, the nucleated cells have a membrane composed of a double layer of fat molecules. Their internal volume, however, is divided into a set of compartments. Within these compartments are dark spots, organelles, which play a very precise role. The cell space is crisscrossed by a highly dynamic network of fibers, tubes and filaments, the cytoskeleton. This enables a heavy traffic of matter to circulate within the cell and controls its deformation and movement by way of the flagellum or cilia. The eukaryotes multiply through division. This is known as mitosis. A mother cell gives birth to two daughter cells. Some cells draw their energy from light. They achieve this process via organelles, known as chloroplasts, which are often green in color. These cells make up unicellular and multicellular algae and plants. Most of the other cells provide their energy by the degradation of sugars and fats. They possess mitochondria, which act as their power stations. But how did all this come to pass? Nucleated cells might have come from ancestral bacteria. They could have evolved into giant mobile cells. The external membrane could then have been folded into the interior of the cytoplasm to form little sacs and some organelles, such as the nucleus. They then incorporated certain kinds of highly efficient bacteria to manage their energy. Chloroplasts, where the photosynthesis of plant cells takes place, and mitochondria. Thus composed, two and a half billion years ago, the nucleated cell became the basic element for all known forms of eukaryote. For more than a billion years, life was unicellular taking place in a liquid and humid environment. The appearance of sexual reproduction accelerated the evolutionary process. An equal share of both individuals' genetic material is contributed to each new generation. In ciliates, this is called conjugation. By merging, the two soulmates share their history. Why did cells group together and form multicellular organisms? To withstand the hostile environment? To join forces? This innovation took place independently at least five times amongst the various forms of algae, mushrooms and animals, the first time being two billion years ago. By grouping together, the cells shared their tasks. Over 250 cell types exist this way. Each has its own function and shape. In an organism, these cells are in permanent interaction, living, dividing and dying together. Within our bodies, 
our heart cells beat imperturbably. The star-shaped neurons form a multitude of nerve networks that travel all over our bodies and brains. Red blood cells carry oxygen in our blood, while white blood cells see to our immune systems. The muscles, enormous cells with several nuclei, contract and relax according to the nerve impulses they receive. The ciliate cells filter the air in our lungs. Germline cells, sperm and oocytes contain only half the chromosomes present in other cells of the body. Their genes united at the moment of fertilization will form a new individual. And each time, the whole story begins again. Every living being comes from a single cell. <laughs>